just miracles and I mean causing the main to be whole. That's still the one that just boggles my mind. People coming up and their legs cut off, and the Lord's touching them and their leg regrows. People coming up and their legs cut off, and the Lord's touching them and their leg regrows. People coming up and their legs cut off, and the Lord's touching them and their leg regrows. People coming up and their legs cut off, and the Lord's touching them and their leg regrows. But uh, just a real neat answer to prayer. Um, the video that I did about the attacks, current attacks on the ministry, um, there were two cases, open cases left, of the guy I, I you know, showed his information, things just, 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 just to, to show people how these infiltrators work and everything else. And uh, so, uh, people that try to infiltrate, we're going to be able to have access to their full name, address, the whole deal. We're going to be able to have access to their full name, address, the whole deal. We're going to be able to have access to their full name, address, the whole deal. Uh, unlike dealing with liberals that don't protect, uh, leaving Christians like you know myself and you if you're a friend of the ministry. All right, going to do a video exposing the fact and also inconsistency of Brian Dillinger's uh, views on liberty and essentially coming down to the reality that Brian Dillinger, whether he wants to admit it or not, thinks that the New Testament saint has liberty to be a Catholic pagan for one day of the year. Because that's, that's exactly what you're doing if you celebrate Christmas, Christ Mass. You're just being a Catholic pagan. It's one of their high days. But here's the uh, clip, because Brian Dillinger is not ignorant of the fact that this is, this is rooted in uh, Roman Catholicism. He actually has been rebuked uh, and also reproved by a former Catholic, you know, on the thing of Christmas. So here's a clip where he actually tells that tells that experience. Watch this. I have I have disagreements with some of the brethren on the the thing of you know whether you can celebrate certain holidays or whatever else. But, um, you know, and going back and forth. I literally had a brother come to this location here in Bridgewater to my front door. Lives north of me, and he literally came and he said, brother. He said, I love you. I love your ministry, but you're wrong on the holiday thing. I don't, I'm very much against Christmas. He said, you're against Easter. I'm against Easter. But he said, I'm former Catholic. I'm very much against the whole Christmas thing and whatever else. And we had a nice discussion and he left. We shook hands. God bless you, brother. He left disagreeing with me and I standing there disagreeing with him. Okay. Wow. I mean, I mean, you think you think you probably would, you know, take heed to the fact that a former Catholic is coming to you about Christmas. But well, of course, we have liberty. So here's here's the thing I want to just propose. So Brian Dillinger claims to be this vehement enemy of Rome. So why does he defend one of their biggest high days? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, and this is even after the, his experience with the next Catholic. So it's safe to assume that Brian is well aware that Christmas is a uh, Roman Catholic practice. So when he comes out and tries to deny that Christmas is, is the uh, Catholic Mass of Christ, he's really just showing willful ignorance and a refusal to accept the truth. He and his followers are supposedly the vehement enemies of Rome. So I like to ask, why do they so vigorously defend as liberty one of Rome's biggest and most important high days with a level of vehemence that could, one could easily find on a Catholic apologist site like Catholic Answers? Because they got stuff on there defending Christmas as well. Christ Mass, as what's properly called. Uh, could we be dealing with closeted papists? I generally don't know. But either way, uh, they profess they want to separate from everything that smells of Catholicism. However, Christmas seems to be the exception to that rule. We have liberty to learn the ways of the heathen as long as we just claim to do it unto the Lord. Yeah, it's a bunch of uh, uh, garbage. That's all that it is. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2 to 5. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain, for one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen, with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold, they fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They uh, must needs be, be so they, they must needs be born. Not get reading on the computer, uh, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. Now, I was actually corrected on this. This uh, verse. This is actually talking about statues and idols. However, that is not the only way this can be applied, since Christmas trees have clearly become idols, uh, and they are defended with a bizarre level of vehemence by these Christmas idolaters. 
Okay, uh, Ezekiel chapter 6, verse 13. Then shall you know that I am the Lord, uh, when their slain men shall be among their idols, round about their altars, upon every high hill, in all the tops of the mountains, and under every green tree. And under every thick oak, the place where sorry, the place where they did offer sweet savior to all their idols. And Christmas trees are no different. Instead of putting an idol, you're just putting your presence under the tree. Okay, and also all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine and reproof for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Second Timothy chapter three verse 16 to 17 all scriptures given by inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works okay romans 15 4 for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope and also 1 Corinthians 10, verse 11. Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. So I need to point something out. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2 to 5, and Ezekiel 6, 13 were written in the Old Testament, and they're written to Old Testament Israel. So that so apparently, uh, I guess that apparently now means that New Testament saints have liberty to learn the ways of the heathen as long as we just add Jesus to it. Because that's really what the crux of their argument really comes down to, you know. So, you know, because when you bring up that scripture, we'll say, well, that was written to Old Testament Israel, which, amen to that. So I guess, are, are they implying that we now have liberty to learn heathen ways? Uh, since, like I said, this is exactly what Brian is doing when he and his followers take this heathen Catholic, Catholic custom of Christ Mass and just claim to esteem it unto the Lord. They're just attempting to Christianize heathenism like any Catholic would, you know. Christmas is Catholic. It's it's uh, just as it's not liberty to learn the ways of the Catholic occult high day of Halloween. It's not liberty to learn the ways of the Catholic heathen high day of Christ Mass. Plain and simple. You know, Halloween can be condemned for all the same reasons. Sorry, Christmas can be condemned. Sorry, for all the same reasons Halloween is can be condemned. Because why? Well, it's promoted by the lost world, the lost secular world, which already should be a big red flag if you're uh, truly born again. And even if you are born again, but just carnal. Even then, it should still be a red flag of why is the lost secular world promoting this holiday so much? You know? And all the same arguments against Halloween that it's pagan, it's Catholic, can just as easily be applied to Christmas. Because, you know, that's what, exactly what it is. But no, apparently we actually have liberty. Uh, liberty to learn the ways of the heathen and be Catholic for one day of the year. It's a bunch of uh, insanity. And these, these guys don't like it. Brian and his followers don't like it when you kick this. So, don't be deceived. Uh, Christmas is idolatry, plain and simple. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.